All right, so in the last couple of videos, we've been discussing how to take different Excel objects, so things like charts, things like Excel tables, uh, and exporting those Excel objects into a PowerPoint presentation that we create. And we're doing this all with VBA, so it's all automated, it's all happening in, in the background, and we've seen how to do it with a single object, and we've also seen how to do it with multiple of the same type of object. And so now that we've done charts and Excel tables, we're gonna move on to ranges. So Excel ranges are just normal ranges that exist in your worksheets. So they're not the special type of Excel tables, the ones that have filters and you know, or have defined data ranges and column names. Uh, these are just kind of more broad. And in this particular video, we're gonna work and export just a single range. So a single range that we specify in our workbook and then export that range to a PowerPoint presentation. Now, in my book, I've already got some ranges populated for us. So I've got this one down here at A10 to C14, and then this one A1 to C5. And the goal of this script will be to export this little range up here, the one that goes from A1 to C5, and I wanna export that one to a PowerPoint presentation. So just like the other videos, we're gonna go into our VBA editor, and if you haven't already, insert a new module. And then after you've enabled that module, I wanna go and enable an object library. And that object library is related to PowerPoint objects. And so this will give us the ability to manipulate PowerPoint objects from within the Excel VBA editor. So all we have to do is we have to go up to Tools and click References. And then from here, because I'm already on my system, I've used this library before, so it's already enabled. But if you're new to this, you're not gonna see it right up here at the top. You have to go and scroll down to M for Microsoft. And then once you get to M, you wanna go to the P section, so right around here. And you'll see a library called Microsoft PowerPoint Number Object Library. Depending on the version of Office you're running, you're gonna see a different number here. So if you're on the latest version, you're gonna see a 16. If you're on 2013, you're gonna see a 15. And if you're on 2010, you're gonna see a 14. So regardless of your version, everything should still work the same. All you wanna do is just check that box right here. So just like that. And that will enable your library. You're gonna press OK. And now, we can start writing our subroutine. And so we're gonna call our subroutine sub export range to PowerPoint. Put my little brackets, press enter, tab. First part, I'm gonna declare PowerPoint object variables. So these will actually house PowerPoint objects of so things like applications, presentations, slides, all that fun stuff. First one is gonna be called PPTF, and this is going to be a PowerPoint.application object. So just like Excel is an application, PowerPoint's an application, we're gonna create an object that will house that application for us. And then the next one is gonna be called PPTPres, and this is going to be a presentation object. So that presentation will live within the PowerPoint application but we've got to create an object that will house that presentation for us. And since we've got a presentation, we're probably going to want slides on it. So the last object variable I'm going to declare is going to be called PPT slide. And then this one, you probably can guess it, it's going to be a slide object. So a PowerPoint slide object. And that will actually house our PowerPoint slide for us. And then finally, the last variable I'm gonna declare, it's gonna be for an Excel object variable. And then this one will be called Excel range, and you guessed it, it's a range object. So an actual range object in our worksheet. And now that I've done that, first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a new instance of PowerPoint, because right now it's not open in my system. Gotta open it. 
So I'm going to take the PPT app object variable that I declared above, set that equal to a new PowerPoint application. So a new instance of our PowerPoint application. By default, I'm not going to see that application, so I want to take the object that houses the application, and I want to set that visible property equal to true. So now I'll be able to see the application in the background. And if I run it, we're going to get something we're not necessarily used to seeing. We get this kind of like empty shell. There's nothing really here. It's just the application. So we don't have any presentations in it yet. We don't have any slides in it yet. We all have to still code that um, because VBA is very explicit. If we don't code it, it's not going to do it. So the next thing is we're going to create a new presentation within the application. So we're going to take the PPT Prez object and we're going to set that equal to PT, PPT app. Go in the presentations collection that belongs to that application. So we can think of a collection as a group of objects. In this case, this group of objects is a presentation object. So we have multiple presentation objects that can live within our application. But currently there's none in there. And so I want to create one. So how I create one is I call the add method. And that will add a presentation to the presentations collection. And now we'll have a presentation within the application. And if we run it, it's still not going to look entirely right, but we're getting closer. OK, so now it's not just an empty shell per se, but now we've got at least a presentation, you know, click to add first title. So we have something. We've got a presentation. But we need a slide, so we need to create a new slide within presentation. So very similar, set that PPT slide equal to the PPT Prez object, go within the slides collection that belongs to our presentation, and again, call the add method. Not the add slide method, the add method like to jump ahead and assume we want that. We don't. That's for custom layouts. And then this method, we have two parameters that we need to pass through. The first one tells us the position of that slide. Well, currently we don't have any slides on there, so this one's going to be our first slide. And then we have to specify what kind of layout of this slide that we want. Well, as you can see, there's a ton. I'm just going to go with a simple title slide only. And then after this, if I run it, OK. So now it's starting to look more like what we're used to seeing. So now that we've created our presentation, we need to create a reference to the Excel range we want to export. And so we're going to take the Excel range object that we declared above. Currently, it's empty. It's just kind of like a shell. It's a, it's, it, it's in a sense, it's expecting to, to house something. We just need to tell it what to house. And so I'm going to say, hey, house the range A1 to C5. So I want to export this range right here. So this range goes from A1 to C5. And so I'm passing through the name of that range and I'm saying, hey, fill that in the Excel range object. Once I have that, I want to copy the range. So I'm going to call the Excel range dot copy method. So this will copy that range to the clipboard. So the range object has a method where it's just, it copies it. It copies it to our clipboard. And once it's in our clipboard, now we can paste it. But where do we paste it to? We want to paste the range in the slide. So we have to say, hey, go to our slide, go to the shapes collection. So the shapes collection, you know, it's a group of all the shape objects on our slide. And then paste that range into the slide. So now it's going to be part of that shapes collection. So we call the paste method in order to do that. So I'm going to run the script just like it is. We may or may not get an error. Nothing was written incorrectly, 
but there is an error that can sometimes happen in the background. Um, I'll explain what that error is and how we fix it. It's not really hard to fix, but it can be a headache sometimes. Oh, it worked. No. No, it's good. It's okay. So it did exactly what we wanted. It copied the range and it pasted it into our slide for us. So just exactly like what we wanted. Um, sometimes it doesn't always happen like that. <laughs> so there is an error and it can be sometimes an elusive error. It sometimes happens. It sometimes doesn't. And it has to do with this line right up here. So as you probably already can see, it's just copying our range. But the problem is, this part depends on this part. So if, this, if something goes wrong up here, we're going to fail here too. Um, and what can happen sometimes is our script runs a little bit too fast. And so it will, it will copy it, but it never actually gets into the clipboard. <laughs> and then so what happens is when this one's called, it's saying, okay, I'm going to look in the clipboard for the information I need to paste, and I'm going to look in there, and then lo and behold, there's nothing in there. Well, I'm gonna return an error to you because I'm looking for something that doesn't exist. So you must have wrote something wrong, right? No, not in the case. It's just that the script kind of jumped ahead a little bit. So it, it went to this part before actually making sure the range was in the clipboard. And so how we fix this is we just have to pause our script. So we pause, pause the script. And a lot of times we just gotta do it for one second. Sometimes you have to do two, very rarely. And so how we pause our script for one second is I'm gonna call the application object, so the Excel application. I'm gonna call the wait method, so this will basically say, hey, <clears throat> wait. I'm gonna pass now, plus number sign, 12, colon, 00, colon, 01, AM. All this is saying, just take the time it is now, add one second to it, and just pause it. That's all it's doing. And so by adding this line, we're giving the application enough time to actually make sure the range is in the clipboard before we call this. So it's kind of like a fail safe. Again, sometimes error pops up, sometimes it doesn't. So if we run it now, it's still going to work. In fact, it, it should work definitely this time because we paused it. Um, but I like to show that solution because it pops up and it seems to be very erratic about when it happens and when it doesn't happen. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of documentation out there on how to fix this error because people just kind of give up and say, well, it's not really being clear about what's going on because it's not intuitive. Like the first thing you're not going to ask is say, well, it must be on in the clipboard. And so I did enough research to finally <laughs> figure out a solution. So save yourself the hassle and just, you know, copy this line in there and then you should be good to go. But other than that, that concludes this part of the video. So again, all we did is we just took this Excel range and we copied it into a PowerPoint presentation. In the next video, we're going to start working with multiple ranges. So in the chart one, we were working first with a single chart and then we went to multiple charts and then with the list object one, started with one list object and then we went to multiple list objects so naturally we got to go to multiple ranges so it's not going to look exactly the same as the ones like the list object and the chart objects but still nothing super complicated but other than that this concludes that video and if you have any questions please comment below you know i'll try to get back to you and if you know if you're having an error with your script or something like that you know i'll try to help you through it um, and then, you know, as always, please like and subscribe. That helps a lot. But uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.